All right, you guys, it's time for us to get started on a new series that a lot of you have been asking for. This lesson is going to be the first lesson in a series talking about a small but powerful heart pump called the Impella. It's a simple looking but complex device that does a lot of work to support some of our sickest cardiac patients. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the Impella is, how it works, and what it does to support our patients. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my goal with this channel is to try to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and making them easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that, and if I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel below. This way you'll never miss out when I release a new lesson. Now, if you'd also like to earn CE credits for watching the videos that I put together, then you can simply become a member of ICU Advantage Academy at icuadvantage.com forward slash academy, or follow the link down below and join there. Now, as an Academy member, you're also going to have access to the brand new and beautifully designed premium notes that I'm working on redesigning. Now, if you don't want or need CE credits, but would like to access the original style notes and the audio only versions of my lessons, you can also become a YouTube or Patreon member and access all the notes for the whole channel there. You'll find links to both of those down below as well. And also don't forget to take a free quiz and test your knowledge at the end of the video. You'll find the link to that below as well. All right, so I am truly excited to be getting around to this series. So many people have asked about this one, and honestly, it's one of my most favorite devices to care for. We've got a lot to talk about, not only in this lesson, but throughout this series. And this lesson is going to start things off giving you a, a good idea of what the Impella is and compare it to other mechanical circulatory support devices, uh, as well as compare the different versions we have of the Impella. This way, you'll have a solid understanding of what the Impella actually does for our patients. So let's start off talking about what is an impella. So an impella is a catheter-based percutaneous continuous flow microaxial heart pump that supports cardiac function and provides temporary hemodynamic support and really allows for resting of the heart. So that was a bit of a mouthful. We'll kind of talk about that here, um, but it's actually made by a company called Abiomed and the impella is actually the smallest heart pump in the world. It provides temporary mechanical circulatory support, or what we call MCS. Now, the Impella can provide left or right-sided support, and it can be inserted in a few different spots, all of which I'll discuss more shortly here. The most common one you're going to see, though, is the left-sided Impella CP. The Impella CP is most often inserted via the femoral artery here in the patient's groin. From there, we're going to have it travel retrograde up the descending aorta, around the aortic arch, and then down the ascending aorta until it sits straddled right across the aortic valve. Now the inflow, which is at the, the distal part of this catheter, sits on the inside of the left ventricle and is roughly in the middle of the ventricle, and then the outflow, which is more proximal here on the catheter, sits in the ascending aorta. Now, as I mentioned, there is a microaxial pump at the outflow, and when it turns, it pulls blood from inside the left ventricle and ejects this blood forward into the aorta. So this microaxial pump, uh, here's an example of it here, this really works like an impeller on a jet ski or uh, what we call a water screw, where as it turns, the design of this actually moves blood forward. Doing this, it essentially moves blood out of and unloads the left ventricle while also providing that forward flow of blood into the systemic circulation, assisting with cardiac output. We'll talk about this more in a future lesson, but it's imperative that the impeller remains positioned correctly across the aortic valve in order to function properly. When it is positioned and working properly, the impella improves cardiac output and systemic perfusion, increases coronary perfusion and the, thus myocardial oxygen supply, while also decreasing the workload and thus the myocardial oxygen demand of the heart. Again, we'll dive deeper into the hemodynamics in a future lesson. 
So now that you understand the basics of what an appella does and how it works, the question is, who is this for? So let's talk about the indications for its use. And it's pretty simple. There's really just two primary indications. First off, it's often used for protective uh, PCI for patients undergoing high-risk PCI in the cath lab. And many of these cases, the impella is inserted, utilized during the procedure, and then removed at the end of the case. It may also be left in in order to provide continued unloading of the left ventricle uh, and decreased myocardial demand, really helping to further rest the heart. Now, in addition to the protected PCI, Impella is commonly used to support cardiac function in patients who are in cardiogenic shock. So this can be either post-MI, from decompensated heart failure, post-open heart surgery, or even something like myocarditis. Remember, though, that in cardiogenic shock, the patients don't have adequate perfusion from the heart being unable to pump enough blood forward. By using the impella, we can help with this forward flow of blood necessary to provide systemic uh, as well as coronary perfusion while also allowing the heart to rest. And remember that this support is only temporary. We're only buying time to bridge to either recovery, transplant, or some other long-term ventricular support device such as an LVAD. Okay, now I had mentioned earlier that there are different types of impellas, so now let's talk about the family of different impella heart pumps. And first is going to be the impella CP. So the impella CP, which we just talked about, is the most common impella that's used. It supports left ventricular function and is inserted percutaneously via that femoral artery in the groin, being positioned across the aortic valve, draining the left ventricle, and injecting into the aorta. It's a 14 French catheter for the impella itself, and then the remaining shaft on it is a 9 French catheter. The maximum flow that we can achieve is upwards of 4.3 liters per minute, which is a pretty hefty amount of support for such a small device. Now, I remember when the rep did a demonstration of its flow with a, a water bottle in my impella class, and I was quite amazed with it. As you can see here, the video only shows it getting about 3.3 liters per minute of flow, um, but it's quite the amount of flow coming out of such a tiny thing. All right, next is the Impella 5.5, which you can think of as the big brother to the Impella CP. This is also another left-sided support Impella, but this is a much larger 21 French catheter, again with a 9 French shaft. Instead of being placed percutaneously via the femoral artery, though, this one's placed surgically via the axillary artery, typically on the patient's right side. So this catheter travels across and works its way down into the aortic arch and the ascending aorta, and then again sits straddling across the aortic valve, draining that left ventricle and ejecting blood into the ascending aorta. As its name suggests, it can support up to 5.5 liters per minute of flow and thus provide greater hemodynamic support and is often used when the support from the CP is just not enough. And then finally, we have the Impella RP. Now, unlike the CP and the 5.5, the RP is not a left-sided support device, but rather a right-sided one. So if a patient is in acute right-sided heart failure, the RP can support the RV function and pulmonary circulation. So the Impella RP is another large percutaneously inserted catheter, this time coming in at 21 French for the catheter and 11 French for the shaft, that's then inserted via the patient's femoral vein. It travels up the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, and then due to its, its shape that we snake it into the right ventricle and into the pulmonary artery, this time straddling across both the pulmonic valve and the tricuspid valve. In this configuration, the end of the catheter contains the outlet, so the distal part, which is sitting in the pulmonary artery, while the inlet is more proximal on the catheter, and this is sitting inside the IVC or the right atrium. Now the RP can provide around four liters per minute of support and can be used either independently for just right-sided support or together with an Impella CP or 5.5 for biventricular support. So the Impella family of devices can serve a wide range of patients and provide some pretty substantial support for these patients. 
All right, now the last thing that I want to cover in this lesson is a comparison to other types of mechanical circulatory support that you're going to come across. It's helpful to understand in what ways the impella is similar to, but also what ways it's different from other types of MCS that we use. So first we have the intra-aortic balloon pump. I've previously discussed the balloon pump in depth in another series, which I'll link to up above here, but a balloon pump is also inserted in the groin into the femoral artery. Here it also travels retrograde up the descending aorta, but it has an inflatable balloon at the end of the catheter that rests in the aorta just before the aortic arch. So the balloon pump works by counterpulsation. So it's timing inflation and deflation counter coordinated with the contraction of the heart working in a pulsatile flow manner. This primarily works to augment diastolic pressure and reduces systolic afterload. It does also provide a modest amount of cardiac output augmentation at times, anywhere from a half to one liter per minute, but this primarily helps to reduce myocardial oxygen demand by reducing the afterload and then improve myocardial oxygen supply with the diastolic augmentation. In contrast, the impella uses the axial flow motor to directly offload the left ventricle and to provide, even with just the CP, significantly more blood flow and thus uh, systemic perfusion while also providing greater myocardial oxygen supply and then further decreasing myocardial oxygen de demand through that unloading. The impella is also a continuous flow device, meaning it has no pulsatility. All right, now next we have the implanted LVAD, and these are surgically implanted long-term devices that support left-sided cardiac output. Depending on the device and the settings and, and other patient factors, that these devices can achieve upwards of 6 liters per minute of flow. Some devices are continuous flow, while some also mimic a pulsatile flow, and they directly unload the left ventricle and move the blood into the aorta, and they're meant for long-term therapy, designed to either bridge to transplant or even provide lifelong cardiac support. Now, while the impella and the LVAD work very similar to each other, the biggest difference is that the impella is percutaneously inserted and is only a temporary form of support lasting anywhere from days to weeks. Some patients, though, may end up with an impella prior to surgical implantation of a longer-lasting LVAD. All right, next we have the tandem heart, which is another form of temporary percutaneous continuous flow ventricular support. The tandem, depending on the cannulas and the configurations, can be used as either left-sided, right-sided, or by ventricular support, and it provides a flow up to 3 to 5 liters per minute. Now, for left-sided support, one cannula is inserted via the femoral vein, travels up the IVC into the right atrium, and then they use a septal puncture to place the drainage cannula into the left atrium. The blood is pulled outside the body, something we call extracorporeal, into a centrifugal pump that then pumps the blood back to the body via a catheter inserted in the femoral artery. This setup unloads the left side and returns blood to the aorta, some of which travels retrograde all the way back up to the heart to perfuse the upper body. Now for right side support, they have a Protect Duo cannula, which is a dual lumen cannula that takes the same path as a PA catheter and drains blood from the vena cava or right atrium out to the external pump and then returns the blood back through the other lumen of the same catheter that then ejects it into the pulmonary artery. This essentially provides support for the right side or the right ventricle. And then an oxygenator can also be added to this configuration to mimic VV ECMO with right ventricular support. And then finally for biventricular support, we have a venous drainage cannula that's placed in either the IVC or the SVC, which pulls blood to the pump and the oxygenator in line and then returns that blood to a cannula in the femoral artery functioning as VA ECMO and thus total cardiac support with oxygenation. Now, while both the impella and the tandem are both percutaneous approaches and both provide left, right, or biventricular support, the two of them are actually quite different. 
The main difference are in the cannula catheter position, as well as the impella is a self-contained microaxial pump, while the tandem relies on an extracorporeal pump. Flow rates achieved, depending on device, are pretty similar, uh, and there's also no way to oxygenate the blood with an impella. Alright, next is a relative newcomer to the scene, something that we call the percutaneous heart pump, or PHP. Uh, well, I don't have experience with this one. I did come across information on it, and I wanted to cover it briefly, although it sounds like they had some pump malfunction issues in early clinical trials, so I'm not sure if this is currently being used in clinical practice right now or not. Now, if your unit or hospital does use them, uh, I'd love to hear from you, so let me know in the comments down below. So the PHP is similar to the impella uh, and is another percutaneously placed catheter inserted via the femoral artery, traveling retrograde up the aorta, around the arch, and into the ascending aorta, sitting straddled across the aortic valve. So the PHP uses an expandable, continuous flow microaxial pump that is opened and then functions in a similar manner to the impella, offloading the left ventricle and then moving blood into the aorta. Because of the design of the expanding pump, uh, it becomes larger once it's placed and then can provide up to 5 liters per minute of blood flow. It does also look like Impella has been developing a version of this and trialing it as well. Uh, they call it the Impella ECP or Expandable CP. And then finally, the last comparison is going to be to ECMO and more specifically VA ECMO. Now, I do have a series looking at just ECMO, which again, I'll link to up above, so I won't go into too much detail here. But VA ECMO is a form of extracorporeal biventricular support. Uh, it drains blood from the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava via percutaneous cannula, moves blood extracorporeally to an external centrifugal pump with an oxygenator in line, and then returns the blood retrograde to the aorta via either a surgical cut down or a percutaneously placed cannula inserted in the femoral iliac artery, much like I just talked about with the biventricular tandem support. Now ECMO can generate upwards of six liters per minute of continuous flow, full cardiopulmonary support. Unlike an impella, ECMO does not provide single-sided support and is only used for completely taking over the workload of the heart. Many times an impella is also used in tandem though with VA ECMO to help offload the left ventricle, which is something I'll talk about more towards the end of the series. Now, while through the addition of an RP, impella can provide biventricular support, in my experience at a facility with ECMO capabilities, more often if a patient requires progression to biventricular support from like an impella CP or an impella 5.5, then VA ECMO is more than likely going to be used here. All right, well, we covered quite a bit of info in this lesson, and hopefully you've now got a better understanding of how exactly an impella works and what it does and doesn't do for our patients. Remember, these patients are going to be pretty sick, and especially in the cases of cardiogenic shock, they're going to be quite dependent on the flow that the impella supplies. Now, moving forward, this lesson will serve as a foundation for the remaining lessons in the series as we continue to look at all aspects of impella management, so I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys in the upcoming lesson. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. Uh, it really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that. As well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.